You may remember that a while ago on the show, I made a video titled, Can You Game on the Pinebook Pro? In that video, I tested a few games on the ARM-powered Pinebook Pro laptop and found that a fair few of them actually perform pretty decently. In today's video, I thought I'd make a follow-up to that video and try a few more games on the Pinebook Pro. Right now, on the Linux Lounge. So before we start testing some games, I first need to say that I'm using Manjaro ARM on the Pinebook Pro, since in my experience I tend to find that it has the most up-to-date software and drivers for the Pinebook Pro, and I also find that it just generally works the best out of all the Pinebook Pro distributions. So with that said, let's test some games. First, I decided to try a bit of emulation on the Pinebook Pro. More specifically, I tried some Super Nintendo games using SNES 9X. Everything seemed to work really well and performance was perfect, although sadly, recording the screen did seem to cause some lag. I have to say though that I'm really impressed by this. Thanks to SNES 9X, you have access to hundreds of brilliant SNES games right on your Pinebook Pro, and they look absolutely amazing on the Pinebook Pro's brilliant screen. I was even able to connect a PS4 controller to my Pinebook Pro for a much better gaming experience. So all in all, playing Super Nintendo games on the Pinebook Pro is pretty great. The next game that I decided to try is an ARM native open source Linux game, and that game is OpenTTD. Essentially, OpenTTD is an open source re-implementation of Transport Tycoon Deluxe. Now, admittedly, I don't actually know how to play this game, but it does seem to work fine. I decided to go ahead and spectate an online game, and everything seemed to perform well enough. I saw a few slowdowns here and there, but I think overall this game is going to be more than playable on the Pinebook Pro. Perhaps I'll even learn how to play it using my Pinebook Pro. The next game that I decided to try on my Pinebook Pro is T-Worlds. T-Worlds is essentially a rather brilliant open source 2D shooter, and sure enough it works great on the Pinebook Pro, and is just generally great fun all round. Although once again, screen recording does seem to cause some lag, so I would probably advise against using the Pinebook Pro to start your YouTube or streaming career. But all jokes aside, T-Worlds is great fun and works great on the Pinebook Pro. Next, I decided to try a 3D racing game. And for that, I went with Sonic Robo Blast 2 Kart, which is an open source Sonic racing fan game that has a Linux version. On the Pinebook Pro, it seems to run pretty well, although as with most games that are moderately demanding, it doesn't run 100% on the Pinebook Pro. But it is certainly playable, and you could definitely have a lot of fun with this game. There are a wide variety of tracks and characters, and there's plenty of content here to keep you amused for quite a long time. The next game that I decided to try is Neverput. Essentially, Neverput is a fairly simple 3D mini golf game. It's also notably packaged with Neverball, which is what I wanted to try originally, but for some reason I couldn't input my name, so therefore I couldn't start the game. If someone knows how to fix this, maybe I'll feature Neverball in the next Pinebook Pro game testing video. Neverput, however, seems to work absolutely fine, and is probably the smoothest game I've tried so far on the Pinebook Pro, when I'm not screen recording, that is. The game is also great fun, and I was able to happily play through the first course on the Pinebook Pro, and I'll definitely be going back to this game when I've got some time to kill. So if you own a Pinebook Pro, I can't recommend Neverput enough, it's a brilliant game. Finally, for the last game, I decided to try out the first release candidate for Super Tux Kart 1.3. The reason why I decided to try it is because according to the release notes for this version of Super Tux Kart, the game now supports resolution scaling. I thought that this would be what the Pinebook Pro needed to hit a good frame rate in this game, but unfortunately, resolution scaling seems to require advanced pipeline to be enabled, which sadly seems to negate the benefit of resolution scaling on the Pinebook Pro. So sadly, if you want to play Super Super Tux Kart on the Pinebook Pro, your two options are sadly still to either run the game in a window or run it in full screen mode at a subpar frame rate. So there we go, we've tested five more games on the Pinebook Pro and they all seem to work reasonably well. Although the Pinebook Pro definitely isn't a gaming machine by any means, as we've seen today, there is still a decent library of games that you can play on the Pinebook Pro. But with that said, that's it for today's video. What did you think of it? Do you also play games on your Pinebook Pro? Let me know in the comment section below. I thank you for watching today's video and I will see you in the next one.